And welcome back to my man cave. I'm not an expert, which is my YouTube channel name. So remember, anything that you see on this, do at your own risk. I'm not responsible. Today on my Lee Pro 1000, I'm going to show how I converted it from the standard Lee tray sliding trough primer system to a tube primer system. And a quick review. This is the Lee system. It's kind of a shake, rattle, and roll system. You put the primers up here. As the stage goes up and down, you can see there's a system here that rides over the grooves and shakes, rattles, and rolls the primers. This is not what came originally with it. This is an adapt which works a little bit better. This spring holds this bar up, up against the rod here and makes sure it shakes and rattles. And of course the primers come sliding down here and into this system here where they get loaded into the casing. So I've taken it apart here so you can see the inside workings. Here's where the primers come down. As a shell casing comes around, it trips a lever, letting the primers go down into the next station. And you can see right here, here's a possible problem. The, the primer didn't go all the way home here, so it needed to go a little bit farther. So in that case where you go to load it into your shell casing, you'll hear a crunching sound. Or the other issue that can happen, and this happens, probably two out of a hundred rounds for me. When it goes in there, it turns 90 degrees and you, that's how it gets loaded into the shell casing and you pretty much end up putting that in the trash can. So here is the tube primer system. There's a little metallic slide there. It goes back and underneath the tube picks up a primer, brings it forward, and places it and holds it securely in place until the pin from down below comes up and pushes it up into the shell. It's a very robust system and it doesn't give the primer the opportunity to be moving around and getting flipped. For making the primer pickup tube, I got somewhat lucky on that. I was going through my junk drawer and came across an old telescoping antenna. And when I took it apart, it turned out that it was the exact perfect size for making a primer pickup. And I put the dimensions of the tube right here. If you can't find an old telescoping antenna, obviously you can just buy these tubes right off Amazon that are made for one of the made by one of the other loading companies. Um, printed the tip off from Thingiverse. I'll put their place on Thingiverse down below where you can download this if you wanted to 3D print it. It just goes on to the end here. And at the other end of the tube, there's a little cross slot drilled here. And you put a piece of paper clip through there so the primers don't fall out. And then you just go and pick them up. It goes quite quickly. And if you've got the tube, you can hear them falling through there. And that's the purpose of the clip so they don't fall off. Once you would put it into place on top of the mechanism for loading the primers into the press, you would pull this pin out and let them drop into place. So here is the tube primer system. 
There's a little metallic slide there. It goes back and underneath the tube picks up our primer, brings it forward and places it and holds it securely in place until the pin from down below comes up and pushes it up into the shell. It's a very robust system and it doesn't give the primer the opportunity to be moving around and getting flipped. These are the parts that control the primers going into the rotating station. Um, 832 5 by 5 8 screw. Just an ordinary sleeve you can make out of a piece of pipe. The dimensions are there. Yeah, this is spring I found out of an old computer printer. So you just have to look around for that. Or if you go on to the YouTube, this old Tony, he has a whole set of making your own springs if you wanted to do that. Here is the 3D part that you print out. And again, I'll put this on Thingiverse. Number 10 washer. And this is a 3D printed spacer. Again, this will be on your Thingiverse. And I'll put a reference to that down below. And a binder clip. Next, I'll show you how all these go together. This is what the um, blocking finger looks like when it's in position here. The purpose of the binder clip is that there was no room to get a nylon lock nut underneath there so once you get this adjusted to the tension that you want you just clip that onto the bottom of the thread and surprisingly it works extremely well to keep it from moving. Um, before I forget this is a little clip that goes onto the very bottom here. For this system to work, this clip has to be removed. It, its function is to help control the primer pusher there. So this is how it, it looks when you add it. Um, you can see right now that the primers are being blocked from going in if there were a primer tube here. And you can see where it hits that. Once this is out of the way, that can go in there and load primers. Um, the other purpose of this, you'll see as it comes around. Okay, so here comes the shell. And if you look over here, it's going to release the primers there and allow it to come in. The other thing that this does is this pushes and holds, I'm sorry, it pushes and holds the shell in place. And then when it goes up and comes back down, you'll see the shell goes out of position here. And there's now no shell in the next one. And the primer is blocked from going in. And if I haven't said it already, this lever does go on top of the carousel here. It's thin enough that it doesn't get smashed when it comes up against the top plate here. Um, the next part to make would be what I call as a primer pusher. This one is made out of steel. There will be plans on Thingiverse. You can print out a plastic one and there's even a little place here on the side for a hole so you can add this eyelet. This eyelet is where the string will be attached to that moves the mechanism back and forth. This one here is out of steel and I haven't mentioned it already. You can use this as a template. I found the best material here is to make it out of aluminum. This is a hundred thousandths thick and it worked out pretty nicely. You can just lay this here and draw a thick line with a magic marker. Put that on there and then scribe, scribe it out. On the one I made out of aluminum here, 
I actually left a little spot on the end there so I didn't have to add an eyelet but adding an eyelet is no big deal either all of the plastic parts for this system were printed out on the Ender 3 3, 3 excuse me Ender 3 3D printer all were printed at 100% infill PLA this was the only part that I had to turn supports on and this support in here for some reason was very hard to get out so I ended up having to drill a lot of it out support here wasn't too bad <coughs> excuse me again this was the only part that I had supports turned on all parts 100% infill this part took a hour and 50 minutes to print out and it will have the place for the holes for the eyelets to go you might have to drill them a little bit larger depending on the size of your eyelets and again over here you just lift up the carousel unthread it from this nut here lift the carousel up pull the old chute out with the new one in and it should drop right in there there's not a lot of fitting on this for the most part you will have to hand fit the slide going in here because a lot of times there's little pieces of plastic in there and you want that slide that when it goes in there it moves absolutely freely drops back and forth under its own weight there after you've got all the parts installed the next thing and be fairly easy is this is just a weight I found it's one and a half ounces or about 44 grams and with 13 thousandths diameter fishing line it comes up through the eyelet in here timing is not very critical on here with the press all the way down you don't want your weight touching your bottom here otherwise it's not going to do its job on the other hand when it comes all the way up here you don't want the line so short that it's jamming up here so it's pretty straightforward the other line that does the timing is a lot more critical you can see there is a spring here again I found this out of an old thrown away printer and it comes up and wraps around here you can see when it's all the way down how much slack there is in the system so the first qualification for getting all the timing in when this goes all the way up you want to make sure that the slider come or the, I'm sorry the primer pusher comes all the way back as, as it's coming down this is not so critical here because right now there's not a piece of brass in here so it's being blocked so we'll come all the way around so now when a stage comes down here comes the brass and it breaks open the gate and lets that slider go in you need this slider to go all the way in here and I put a little piece of red magic marker to make sure that it goes all the way in and then comes down so that's the first part of the priming here now when I'm sorry the first part of the timing so the next thing is when this comes all the way up and that brass comes down that brass is going to move and you want this primer pusher blocked let me show you that again here sorry for the shaky hands so you can see here right now the primers in there I'm sorry right now the brass is in there and it's coming out of there and it's letting that red blocker finger come forward and now it blocks 
the primer pusher from going in there. And you're going to have to experiment with the length of this to get all that timing just correct. That's why I said in the earlier part here that this red finger, you can probably go with the other finger that came originally with it and you won't have the timer blocker here in case an empty space comes around. So you'd have to come around over here and just hold this from going in. If you were to go real slowly, and I've done this before, without a finger there, that part will come in, it'll come down, lift the primer up, and if you go slowly, it'll actually lower that primer back in, down into the primer pusher, and it'll come back carrying it. Obviously, if there's any type of jiggling there, it's going to bounce that primer out of that tiny little slot there. But if you do it slowly, you can actually pull a primer into there. And it'll come up out of there. And the primer will be sitting on top of the pin. If you low it slowly, it goes back into that little bar there and gets pulled back out. Slightest bit of um, jarring will help knock that out. So that's pretty much it. Uh, number one, run word of caution. There's going to be a lot of hand fitting in here. You're going over some very tight tolerances. In general, I found four thousandths of an inch or 0.1 millimeter would make or break the system when it comes to timing. And again, most critical timing is on this red finger so if you have it getting frustrated in that you can try operating the system without it and also to make it clear I've said it many times but I'll reinforce the statement this pin has to come off the bottom of here otherwise it's going to hold that up there hold that pin up and it's not going to work for you so I hope that helps you and you can get this to work for you and even better take what I have and make a lot of improvements and make it work a lot better and put those comments down below so other people can read them and adapt your changes. Thanks.